So what we're going to talk about today is walk and run cycles, okay? And how we do walk and run cycles uh, easily and efficiently. Because here's this thing, when you're animating, and let's say you have somebody running uh, across the frame, okay? You can have um, that, it's a repetitive motion, right? When you run, you do the same two steps over and over and over and over again, left foot, then right foot, and you just keep doing that. All as an animator, it's very frustrating, uh, although sometimes necessary, to have to repeat those same motions over and over and over again. So what I'm going to show you today is a way of not having to animate it more than just once, that, that cycle of two steps. So the first thing I'm going to do that's very helpful is I'm going to go uh, online and on Google I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in run cycle. Okay, now this works for any kind of repetitive motion that you're trying to animate with a character, a walk cycle, uh, a run cycle, you know, anything like that. And so I'm just going to click images and you're going to see a whole series of, of keyframes basically for run cycles that you can use. Uh, this one here is from a book that I have here in the room which is the Animator's Survival Toolkit um, or Survival Kit and it's, it's fantastic. Um, you'll see that it has a little bit more frames than some of them and you'll also see there's a couple different ones so he has this one where the person's running a little bit more upright and then over here the person's really leaning forward and it's a little bit more exaggerated so there's just a, you know there's a lot of things pick one that works save the image to your desktop and actually I might even be able to copy and paste it so copy image and then I'll go right over here and I'm just going to uh, make sure I've clicked on layer one and I'm going to paste it. Okay, there we go. So that worked. I just copied and pasted the image, uh, control V to get that in there. And now what I can do is, let's go backwards just a little bit, 45% here. And I'm going to scale this up with the transform tool. Hold the shift key and the alt key at the same, oops, no, just the shift key. And I'm going to get my keyframes right like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my character in the next frame. So I'm just going to take this and um, I can position it so that I'm right where I want it to be. I can even make it a little bigger here. The shift key helps keep it from squishing. Okay, so whenever you're scaling things up, you use the shift key to help it from squishing. And I'm just going to trace this, but you know, you would want to draw whatever your character is. If your character is you know, um, uh, some sort of an alien or whatever, then obviously you would draw an alien. You wouldn't just draw the person here. So I'm going to take my tablet and I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to trace these keyframes frame by frame. So what I'm also going to do right now is I'm going to lock layer one, go to layer two and um, just take my brush we can zoom in a little bit here, too much, and I can just I can just draw this same thing. Maybe we want to change the form a little bit. You can change the form a little bit. And what's really fun is to actually see it kind of come together and make an animation, okay? And remember, we're just doing outlines first until you get the motion down, and that's uh, after that is when you actually want to um, start putting in the details on your character, so kind of let it, don't, don't go crazy with all the details first while you're trying to get everything done. Okay, so there's frame one. So then what I'm going to do is, under, kind of understanding what's happening here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to say insert frame so that the, uh, the underlying keyframes that I'm copying will stay. So then I'm going to go here and I want to make another keyframe. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say insert blank keyframe. This is just like what I had taught you before when we were doing our bouncing ball demo. However, now he's disappeared, so I'm going to go turn on onion skinning, <clears throat> okay, and now I'm going to unlock 
the bottom layer and I'm just going to move it over. And that's really the trick for this is we want to make our character run in place. So as I'm moving it over, one of the things that's actually really important is I held the shift key down so that it's moving in line. So that it does, it, it kind of snaps and moves in line so that you can get the up and down motion of your character as well. If, if, uh, if it helps, another thing that you could probably do right now is make a new layer and just draw with your brush the, um, the ground on a separate layer just so that you have it always there as a reference. That's not a bad thing to do at all. Then I'll lock that. And so now let's go back to, so I'll lock that. We'll zoom back in on our character here and I'll start drawing. So uh, I'm just going to kind of ignore the other one. And I'll draw my next keyframe. Now, this may or may not, I may have to add in like frames in the middle between them, depending upon how the motion is, but this is just going to get me started. Okay. Now, I don't want this to take too long, so I'm going to start speeding up my drawing here, which means that the outlines are not going to be quite as nice. I'll turn the onion skinning off for the time being because it's kind of bothering me. Okay, so there we go. So now, before I move to the next one, I just don't like the onion skinning, so I'm going to take that off, move this to here, get that set up, okay, right, so that the center is right in the same basic core place, okay, and now I'll move forward, right click, insert a blank keyframe, and I'll trace it again. And so what's happening is I'm building this run cycle and I'm, I'm basically just tracing the position. But these references exist so that we can do this sort of thing and so that we can have this. Now, what's interesting is this is only half the cycle. So as I continue tracing this, I'm, gonna go, I'm starting to go faster. I'm going faster because I don't want to waste your time. Okay. So as we continue doing this, what will happen is the run cycle is only half, though. So if I move over here, you can see I'm ending with the left leg forward and the right leg back. And I started with the right leg forward and the left leg back. So this is half of the cycle. And so what you have to do is you have to reverse the cycle to, do, to actually do the second half. So now, we're, now we're, we're, we're getting pressed for time here. So I'm going to go back here, take the Move tool, move this, go back here, right click, insert a blank keyframe, get my brush. I would expect you to take a little bit more time drawing the characters, yes? Okay. But like I said, I want you guys to be able to get to work, so I'm not taking too much time. So now, once I've kind of ended this set of keyframes, okay, I have to kind of go back and use the first keyframe again, but now I have to interpret it a little differently because I have to reverse the legs. So that's a, that's a negative to this um, reference. So that one's the same. So actually I'm going to this one, but now I have to flip flop the legs. So what's in the foreground becomes the background and what's in the background becomes the foreground. And you might go, what are you talking about? Well, watch. So insert a blank keyframe here. I'll draw his head. Okay, and then here with his body, I'm going to cut off that forearm and bring this arm in like that. So now it looks like this is the, f the right arm, okay, and then 
this leg. Whoops. Oh, well. It's getting a little saggy there. It's all right. So now this arm becomes the back arm. Does that make sense? What I'm doing there? Okay. Okay, so now, I've literally done the last frame. So some of you might be going, okay, but well, wait, wait, what, a, what about this? Oh, he, does, he doesn't have a neck, yep. So some of you may be saying, well, what about this? Well, this is actually the key frame that I drew first. So now, in order to make this work, we have to do something called looping. And in looping, you're going to allow the animation to run over and over and over again in the same place. So watch. What I'm going to do now is go back to my beginning in uh, my beginning keyframe. I'm going to right cop click and I'm going to copy that frame. Then I'm going to come on over here, right click, and now I'm going to paste that frame. And so now I've got my first frame that I did all over again. And actually, I don't even need this because here's the problem: if it loops then that frame will be there twice and it will, it'll jerk, it'll like hesitate a little bit. So I'm not even going to copy that. So what I essentially have, if I turn this off, is a guy running in place and his arm disappears in one frame. Okay, but that's all right. So if I just play that, that's not bad, okay? That's, that's not too bad, that's a good outline. So now what I need to do is I need to make him run from one side of the frame to the other, right? And this is where it can get really easy or get really hard. Here's how traditionally you would have done it. You would have turned onion skinning on, okay? And you would have had to move each frame to the right very slowly as the character went across. Well, that's going to stink big time. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take, click, and highlight all of these. So I just clicked and dragged. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy frames. Boom, got them all. Okay. Now we're going to do something where I'm going to take this first frame here and I'm going to select all, make sure everything else is locked. So Control A, select all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say convert to a symbol. We'll call that symbol runner. This is really important. You do need to name it, so name it runner. Now, if I go in there, I'm going to take all these and I'm just going to delete them. Back, oops. Right click and remove them. So remove frames. Uh, there we are. Okay. So now I've just got what is a symbol here. And you'll notice if I click on it, it shows up as a box. So now I'm actually going to double click into it. There. And you'll see, all of a sudden, I have a new timeline. You can have timelines within timelines within timelines, which is really kind of cool. So now I'm going to paste. So I'm going to click this. I copy it. And it's really important you copy all your frames first. I'm going to remove this frame, and then I'm going to repaste all my frames that I have copied. Now, he moved a little bit, but that's OK. That doesn't really matter. So down here, then I'm going to go back to scene one, and you're gonna, I'm just going to move them here like this. And I'm going to extend, by inserting the frame, I'm going to extend that symbol all the way to the end of my animation. Doesn't look like it does much, does it? But if I go window, nope, control, test movie, or just test, see, he's looping. I've now done one set of cycles, but because the animation is looping inside the symbol, okay, it just plays over and over and over again. And now it gets even better. I can make him run across the screen in two seconds. 
So let's take this. We're going to turn that off. First off, I, I hate the fact that even though you turned off layers, they're still there. So we're going to delete that layer, okay, which is my reference point. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add what we call a tween. So I'm going to take this symbol here, layer 2 symbol. I'm going to move that over like this so that he's off the frame or off the stage. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create a motion tween. And I'm going to move forward in time and then move him over here. Notice I now have two keyframes up in top and a blue bar. There's a frame at the beginning and a frame at the end. And look what it does. It slides him side to side. Now you don't see him running because it doesn't play the internal frames until you test. And so now I have done this animation where I've done actually the minimal amount of work. I did one run cycle, beginning to end, so that it loops. And then I can put that animation into a longer animation. He's running a little fast in my opinion, okay? So I think we can slide, we can make this a little uh, less long. So watch this, it's so easy to make it longer. I, didn't, I said less long, I meant longer. So if I just take the, this one, these two here, like this, highlight them, right click, insert frames, and then I'm just going to click once on this, and I'm going to move the keyframe all the way back over to 60. Let's turn onion skinning off, we don't need that for right now. Okay, <clears throat> and now he's going to take roughly another because that was, what am I at? I didn't even check my frame rate when I did this. 24 frames per second. So he's taking a little bit longer than two seconds to cross the, cross the frame. So if we wanted to make it a three second animation, we should really be at 72, right? No, I can't do my math. Yeah. 72? Yeah, yeah, I was right. Okay, 72. I can do math, I just don't believe my, uh, in myself enough. Right, okay, so. Where's the right click? Stupid pens. Okay, so there we go. We'll insert frames. Then we take the keyframe. We move it all the way over to the end. And now I hit control and enter to test my animation. Now he's moving a little slow, I feel. Okay, where his running animation is taking, is moving pretty fast, but the speed of the body going left to right is a little slow. But you understand the principle of this. And this is a really, really, really key thing that you can do with Animate that will save you so much time. If the animation you're doing is repeatable, where it's an over, a monotonous or a repetition mo repetitious motion, like running or walking, and you want your character to go across the frame, you could sit there and try and draw over and over and over and over again. And instead of doing, so what did I do? Seven, six, six, that was, what, 14 drawings or 13 drawings I think I did? I could do 72 drawings to have to get my character left to right. Or I can do the 14 drawings, then put it inside a symbol, and you encapsulate it in a symbol so that it loops, and then just have him go across the screen at whatever speed you want. This gives you flexibility, and it saves you time, and saves you from drawing all of those frames. Does this make sense? This concept right here of motion tweening and using keyframes and side symbols is huge. You will be able to do this for almost any object that will then be in your animation. So for instance, if I wanted him to be, well, we'll do another demo on what we call multi-plane motion, where we work with perspective and having things moving at different speeds. If you use tweens like this and symbols, it's so easy. So I'm going to save this demo and we'll come back to this at, uh, in a couple of days when I show you how we start working with backgrounds. Okay? But does this make sense? I know it's a long demo, but does it make sense at least the concepts here? Alright. Very cool.